Welcome to the Staying Free podcast. This podcast seeks to give a voice to real people around the world who are attempting to stay free, stay sovereign and stay sane in a world which is changing faster than ever. In this episode, I talk with Joel Rafidi. Joel is a rapper and spiritual mentor and the co-host of the Here for the Truth podcast. Joel caught my attention with his rare spiritual and esoteric approach to what we're seeing in the world today. And we went deep on the personal and collective transformations that are taking place as we transition into a new world. I hope you enjoy this conversation. And if you have any feedback or suggestions for interesting guests, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. A link is in the show notes. On to the episode. Joel, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. It's a pleasure to be here, man. Thanks for having me. So we haven't uh, known each other too long, um, but I have been following you on Twitter for a while and uh, you've been putting some really good takes out there. I've really been enjoying some of the things that you've been talking about, in particular with regards to COVID and the kind of madness of the world that we're entering. Um, yeah. I'm going to read one of your tweets out now, uh, which is your pin tweet, which is one of my favorites. Um, sure. But I really like a lot of the kind of more spiritual side of things that you talk about. So I definitely want to go into that with you, but I'll just read this tweet for now. This attempted global coup will not last. It is built upon inverse, division, and unsustainable anti-life ideologies. By design, it is a perpetual state of self-defeat. Hold the line and reject fear at all times. What seems like a storm will eventually become a breeze. So I just wanted you to kind of elaborate on that because I really love the wording of it and I just wanted to get your thoughts on what inspired that tweet. Yeah, sure, man. Um, well, basically the way that I, that I see it and, and view things is the ideology that's trying to be propagated, um, by, I guess the powers that be, um, it's, it works against life. It works against nature. And basically the entire basis of it is, is suppressing life and it's suppressing what's natural and it's, it's suppressing what organically, um, allows, uh, allows life to, to flow and allows life to, to exist and to grow. Um, and to me, that can never, that can never last. That can, that can never, that can never last forever. If you can imagine the, the allegory or a metaphor of, Basically, they're trying to hold a, a balloon or a, or, a, or a ball underwater, submerged underwater. They're trying to completely suppress it. Um, but ultimately and eventually, the balloon and the ball is going to pop back up to the surface. Um, I just don't think it's it, it, it's it's possible on any level for them to co-opt nature or them for, for them to co-opt the way that the universe, life, and nature organically operates. So nature still exists. Nothing in nature has changed as a result of this. Nature knows nothing of COVID. Nature knows nothing of mask mandates and vaccines or whatever it might be, you know? So, and this is literally just like an overlay over the top of nature. If, 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 if you're in the bush and you never even stepped into mainstream society for the last two years, you would know nothing of what's going on. Nature just continues. Um, and, uh, to me, yeah, basically that, 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 that's the answer, right? Is that this entire ideology, it's, it's anti-life on every single level. They're trying to destroy humanity. They're trying to make us faceless, make us voiceless. Um, they're trying to invert everything that naturally exists within us. And basically to me, that's completely unsustainable and it's not going to last. And that's, that was pretty much what, what inspired that tweet. Yeah, this is definitely something that I've been talking about more recently and in some of my other conversations, which is just that it seems that there is a small group of people that have the belief that they can kind of control and manipulate society according to their means. But it seems very obvious to me that life is far too complex to be kind of um, pushed around and put into a box by a small group of individuals. So it seems self-evidently doomed to failure to me. But why is it that this group of people seem to be under the belief that they can kind of control the complexity of life? Yeah, such a such a such a such a complex question, man. Definitely, and it's it, it's nothing new to me. If you look into the history of this, it's it, it's quite ancient. The, 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 there have been many attempts, um, and ultimately, it comes down to narcissism and psychopathy. They think that they are greater than life itself. 
and uh, control is is the mechanism of, of of a narcissism, right? So they have to they have to sustain the lie because what they fear most is exposure. Exposure to, to the narcissist to the psychopath is absolute death because. At, at the root of it, what this is, is an unwillingness to face oneself, right? So they would rather destroy absolutely everything that exists than to actually face themselves and, and have, have have the death of the illusion that they have been propagating for so long. Um, so for them, it's, it's control or it's death. There's only two choices. And I think understanding the psychology um, of not only conspiracy, but narcissism and psychopathy is such an important way and foundation to actually have a, have a, have a deeper and vaster grasp of the mechanisms of why, of why what we see is taking place in, in, in the life of an individual, we all go through naturally speaking, we're supposed to go through organic rites of passages, right? So the, 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 there's a natural cycle. This is the hero's journey which is naturally flowing for every single person. But the problem is we're not so connected to that journey, to that organic motion of our lives anymore, because we live and exist within a malignant culture, which gives us the opportunities to bypass the organic things that turn us into men and that turn us into adults, right? In ancient cultures, they would literally throw boys out when they were 14, 15 into, in, into the bush and into the wild to go figure their shit out and then to come out the other side as a man. But now we have a society that has pre-carved our life for us, right? You go to school and you go to university, then you go to, you mean one of 10 possible jobs, which makes you a perfect citizen for society. So we never really given that opportunity to face our own darkness and to go through the underworld cycle, which is necessary. So basically this has been bypassed for so long. And now what's happening from my perspective on a collective level is that we're going through a collective rite of passage. We're going through a collective shadow phase, which has to happen for us to actually grow and evolve. So yeah, everything on the surface level may seem as though doom and gloom and that there's no hope and that they have this seemingly endless power to control and manipulate everything. But at the same time, you see the desperation involved in the attempt, right? You see how much, how much more exposed the quote unquote darkness or the evil is compared to what it even was two years ago, right? Two years ago, you could not have a conversation with a regular person about the topic of vaccines. Vaccines were the most taboo topic on planet earth. These were hailed and pitched as the most life-saving miracle of science ever in existence. And if you questioned vaccines completely, you are, you're, you're a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist. But now just looking at this dialogue, things have been, become much more open the last two years. Many people are questioning what's going on right now. That's because now many people have been forced to enter the underworld, to face the darkness without that's showing up. And as a result, also face the darkness within themselves. So I think I've drifted from, from your question, but basically to me, what's going on really is that we're having a collective dark night of the soul. We're, we're collectively being forced to face all the shit and all the shadows that we've avoided for so long. Because when they say man makes, um, God makes man in his image, these people believe they are God, right? So they've been trying to make us in their image. They've been designing the culture to turn us into, into narcissists and to turn us into psychopaths, to turn a blind eye to anything that's our fault in life. Right. And this is one of these anti-life ideologies, which is completely unsustainable. So now this is the darkness catching up. And to me, there's a reconciling that's taking place. There's a recalibration. And yeah, this is, this is, this is a process which was unavoidable, but personally, I'm glad it's taking place. Yeah. So I think I understand where you're coming from. So let me kind of give you my thoughts on where you're going with this and tell me if I'm kind Please. of on the mark here. Like, as you said, these kind of previous uh, cultures, or not really previous cultures, but I guess more ancient cultures um, and yeah. more ancient traditions, they do things like, uh, you know, they'll send the teenage boys out and say, you know, you can't return to the tribe for several years. Um, and then when they do, they've kind of gone through some extremely hard times and they've been, they've gone through their own trials and tribulations. And then when they return, they're kind of 
um, more able to face the world and they've learned the lessons they need to learn in order to kind of be the type of human being they're meant to be. And, yeah. you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is what you're getting at that because we have kind of lost these traditions in Western culture, that we've kind of developed a society of people who haven't gone through the necessary stages of personal evolution. And then therefore this triggers a kind of massive um, like reaction or response on a collective level where we all suddenly have to go through hard times to kind of balance that, um, balance na- rebalance nature in a way. Absolutely, man. That, that's on the mark. Um, we, but it's it, it's 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 a two pronged thing, right? It's our fault, and it's also their fault. It's the, it's the master's fault, and it's the slave's fault for being complicit in in what's taking place. But it's kind of very nefariously designed because they've given us many escape routes to bypass these organic rites of passages, right? That's why our entire culture is built upon escaping the real work escaping our own darkness escaping our own shadows right oh yeah no let, let, let's 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 avoid acknowledging the fact that i lied or i fucked up or i made actions against my spirit or whatever it might be by we have all these escape routes be it video games be it pornography be it social media be it be it whatever it might be we have innumerable options to avoid doing the real work and now to me universe god source nature whatever you want to call it is just reclaiming or taking back or forcing this process that's been avoided to take place and to me this shows itself in many different ways like even during the mass lockdowns right people they they didn't have their distractions they didn't have their routine they didn't have their work they didn't have their escapisms for many people they were forced to face the reality of their life for the very first time whether it be forced to be in their house with their children or their wives and actually see and be with what what they had created and as a result of this process everyone's darkness, everyone's shadows, everyone's unavoided conversations were coming to the surface. And more than ever, relationships have either ended or terminated um, for, for, for those on an inauthentic path. Um, with the, for, for those on an inauthentic path, this, 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 is it. this feels like death, right? Because they more so than ever just want to cling to the normal, to the routine, to the mundane of their life. But for those who are more inclined to a spiritual or an authentic path, this has been the ultimate window of opportunity for them to recalibrate their lives closer to authenticity, for them to really look at all their choices, all their decisions, and begin to say, hey, this actually isn't in alignment with me. Um, So I'm going to begin to shift my choices and shift my decisions and show up more authentically. So this whole process, it is an opportunity at the same time. But yeah, as you mentioned, definitely, this this is something that underlying it all organically has forced everyone's avoided and repressed stuff to come to the surface to be dealt with. Um, And it's, yeah, it's it's a reconciling. Yeah, so this interpretation that you have, I mean, and this is one of the reasons that I wanted to talk to you specifically is because you definitely have this very kind of um, spiritual way of approaching everything that's going on in the world right now. So I didn't really fully go into that in the beginning and give you a full introduction. So this is probably a good time just to go into like what you do and how you've kind of come to these conclusions or these um, ways of framing things that you have today. Yeah, man. Well, for me, I think self-knowledge and understanding my own nature has always been an inherent process for me. It's what's piqued my interest and intrigued my interest more than anything else. Why I do things the way that I do, why I react, why I respond, why I'm interested in the things that I'm interested in. Um, and, uh, through life, even through school, I was, I was the kid always questioning everything. I never really, um, did well with authority. People telling me what to do, how to behave, how to act. Um, I was naturally resistant to, to, to all of that. So I was really open to, um, looking beyond the culture or looking beyond the programming of being my parents, my peers, my schools, the crowd, all of that. Um, growing like my, um, my passion is hip hop. First and foremost, I'm, I'm a conscious hip hop artist. I'm, 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 a, I'm a writer, I'm a poet and a rapper. And this was my dream for the longest time. Um, and you know, to, to, to mainstream society, to my parents, this wasn't an appropriate way to, to earn a living, to be a good citizen, et cetera, et cetera. And, and to me, 
always, it was like, why would I move against what is inherently coming up for me? We all have unique passions, unique desires, unique ways of doing and looking at things. And we have a culture that's trying to tell us that we only have four or five ways to do a certain thing where it's like a cookie cutter. And to me, I just had this extreme resistance to it, which I think is actually a natural thing. So as a result, this led me down a path of um, look, look, looking deeper um, uh, and understanding the, the occult, the esoteric and the hidden nature of things. Um, you mean, I, 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 I came into a bunch of information, read a bunch of books on different authors, which really affected and changed my life. And basically what I came to realize out of all of this is that we are just a microsm of the macrosm. The ancient hermetic saying is as above, so below as within, so without. And I began to realize that everything that I'm experiencing within has answers without and, and vice versa as well. So as I went through my own process, my own, my own cycle of the underworld, began to do my own shadow work and dealt with my own darkness, um, I began to realize that this is actually what's happening on a collective level as well. And I began to realize that the same laws, the same natural laws, the real laws, which govern me, also govern this reality. So simply by understanding my own workings, I began to be able to provide commentary on frame and framework on what is happening in, in the macro, you know, and we live in a moral universe, um, uh, but we're so disconnected from, from our morality, right? We all within us deeply know what's right and what's wrong. We all have a conscience. We all know when it, when it feels good or when it feels bad, if, if we harm someone or if we speak truth, the, the feeling that comes with that as well. But the issue is that everything's been subverted in our reality, right? We've confused government for God. We've confused legal for moral. We've confused um, obedience for intelligence, um, things like this. And so people are so disconnected from their natural rhythms, from who they really are. And this is one of, again, this, these are the anti-life ideologies that I referenced in that initial tweet, which I believe will never, um, will, will, will never hold because simply put, they're working against the natural flow of the universe. And that is why this correction is, is taking place. And this is why this is the perfect time and the ground is very fertile for people to begin to ask the questions, who, who am I? What are my morals? What do I stand for? What do I actually like to do? What are my passions? What's intrinsic to me? Um, and this is, this comes into my, my service now, which, which I offer people is as part of my process, I studied in, in mystery schools with, with Michael Tessarian. Um, and I began to understand the esoteric and the ancient nature of astrology, astrotheology, numerology, tarot, the divination arts, and I began to realize that we are all so unique. We are all far different than anything else, right? We literally came here and incarnated here from my personal perspective with a unique blueprint, um, unique reasons, unique destiny. It's like we chose these attributes, like you're selecting a video game character and you're about to start some kind of video game. We chose attributes to come here and to express in this lifetime. Um, and so when I began to dive into these arts, I got the ultimate reflection of who I really am, right? What these arts tell me about myself is that I'm inclined towards imagination, towards creativity, towards poetry, towards all these things, which I intrinsically knew I was good at. And then I looked at these arts and I got the perfect mirror saying the confirmation saying, yeah, this is why you came here. And to me, that's just the most empowering and incredible thing in the world. So to realize that all I have to do is be me. And I think what we're all receiving now is a lesson in, in authenticity. Yeah. So um, this is actually a little bit of a diversion for the, from the kind of things which I normally talk about with my guests, but I find this super mm. interesting. So let's just stick with this for a minute because um, sure. one of the things which I have kind of thought about is this idea of um, when you're kind of born into this world, the idea that most people just go with the answer that, well, we don't, you know, you're born into this world, but you don't know why, and you didn't choose to do it. And it was a complete chance and your kind of consciousness just comes together. And it's all just one big kind of cosmic mis not, not necessarily mistake, but accident. And, um, yeah. the natural conclusion for me when I think about that is that your interpretation of life 
is that you're essentially a prisoner. Like you're, you, if that's your interpretation, you are like a prisoner. Like you didn't choose any of this. You didn't choose um, to be born. Like e- even your own birth was not your choice and you were just thrust into this universe. And I find that such a strange, when you put it in those terms, I find that a very strange way of looking at the world. So I wouldn't say, I, I don't know how I would define my kind of beliefs on this, um, but I certainly don't think that it's just a random chance that we arrived here. I kind of subscribe to a lot of what you were just saying, which is that we somehow chose this and we can't necessarily access that level of consciousness from our current waking life, like our day-to-day life Mm -hmm. in this dimension. We can't necessarily access that level of consciousness, but we once had it, you know, and the way that I frame this is very similar to like when you go to sleep and you have a dream. Um, You know, we don't um, necessarily think we choose our dreams but someone's choosing them right and that thing is your subconscious right your subconscious mind Mm -hmm. is putting you into Mm -hmm. this dream world and similarly we probably have some kind of super conscious which we can't access from this um day-to-day life which um brought us here which we can't access it and we can't even really comprehend it just like you don't comprehend your sleeping body when you're in a dream and um you know i think that there is some parallels to be drawn here. And even though some of these ideas might sound a bit out there for the average person, when you really break them down, you know, and you compare them to things like dreams, it's not that different. You're just saying, well, we can't necessarily recognize that consciousness has brought us here from our day-to-day life. But, you know, it either exists or if it doesn't exist, you're basically a a prisoner in your own consciousness somehow. Yes, um, absolutely, man. Um, to me, in my experience, in my reality, there is no such thing as a coincidence. Everything is a synchronicity. Everything that I experience in reality is teaching me something deeper about myself, or I am calling this experience in for some reason for me to recognize something within myself. And I know this as, a, as an inherent and natural fact through, through experience. I mean, one can simply look at nature and recognize that there's absolutely no coincidences. The mathematical laws that govern nature are perfectly and intrinsically designed, right? But what you have here is we have ancient programming, which has intentionally been subconsciously planted for us to believe that everything is a mistake, that everything is a coincidence. Um, You know, you can look at Big Bang Theory. Um, You can look at even the, the, the religions, right? The, the entire premise of religion is that divinity is external to you, that God is outside of you, that you are a born sinner, that somehow your vessel is dirty and you need cleaning, right? These are all things that are subconsciously running the programs of the majority of people that we see out there. And what this leads to is basically a population that is inclined towards self-hatred, self-neglect, self-denial. Um, it's, it's, it's basically, yeah, it's, it's, it's self-negation, right? We don't want to be in, inside our body. We think that we're dirty. We don't, we're not able to grasp the love for ourselves, which would make us inclined to make decisions that are beneficial for ourselves that would incline us to want to get healthy and want to pursue our passions and want to think of ourselves as as deserving and as worthy um and uh, this collectively puts us in a frequency where we are open to someone else telling us what God is, where God is, who God is. And at the moment, the state is the God. At the moment, the state knows best. At the moment, whatever the state says goes because we have lost our own inner authority because we've been taught and programmed not to trust ourselves on on any level whatsoever. Um, This is why we've been exposed even through Hollywood to extreme violence, to extreme pornography, to extreme ideas that are so, again, anti anti life right um and they're basically been trying to 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 teach us um that we we we're not good enough um and this is why something like the whole scandemic was so easy to to manipulate the masses because they they were already under the spell that um they're not equipped to make the proper decisions for their own life that responsibility is better off in the hands of the state or for someone else or with someone else. Yeah. And I definitely think that people are having to become responsible for themselves again, at least, um, 
a lot of people, if you don't trust the narrative, people are having to find that for themselves right now. Yeah. And you mentioned the word frequency there. And mm-hmm. sometimes I find that I'm kind of walking around and I see people who, who appear to be on a completely different frequency to me. I mean, you yeah. know, I'll be kind of walking around in a park out in the open on a sunny day. And there'll be people there who are, you know, double masks and have a face visor on. And, you know, you know that these people are going to be just queuing up for every single booster, like people queue up for the newest iPhone. And it's like, you know, can you speak to that for a minute? Just like how people in the same physical space can seemingly be existing on such a different frequency? Yeah, man. Um, It it comes down to... Um, programming. It comes down to how well they know themselves. It comes down to how much responsibility that they're willing to take for their own lives. And now more than ever, you can, as you mentioned, you can literally be standing next to someone and living in two completely alternate realities, depending on what you've taken on, right? If someone's been sitting there just on their couch, locked in their house, watching mainstream news 24 hours a day, being told exactly what to think, how to do, how, 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 how to be, um, then uh, of course they're going to be in this lowered or numbed out state where, where, where they're going to be obedient and complicit to everything that the state is telling them. And what the state wants them to be is just perpetual sheeps, robots, easily to manipulate, easily to control. Um, They want them scared of them, scared of themselves, scared of the air, right? Scared of everything. But for yourself, who's kind of, risen above that programming and has seen, seen, seen it for what it is and has decided not to completely believe everything that the state says and that the news says and that the media tells them, then that programming simply put, isn't, isn't there for you and and isn't ingrained in you. You've decided to choose um, your own path and to, and to acknowledge and honor your own deeper truths and your own deeper sense of of morality to make decisions for yourself. You've realized that what the state is telling me that this, this, this doesn't make sense. Why would we, right? You've decided to look beyond the veil, so to speak. And some people simply are still trapped in that veil. Yeah. And this reminds me a little bit of the placebo effect, because some of the things that we're talking about, some people might look at and say, oh, well, you know, this is kind of, you know, woo science and, you know, it doesn't have any grounding in scientific reality. But I often look at something like the placebo effect Mm -hmm. and that actually doesn't make any scientific sense. You know, this is essentially just a rule by which your beliefs about something can completely change the outcome regardless um, of whether it makes any sense or not, right? So you can give someone a, a sugar pill Um, and someone else you can give them medicine and that person taking a sugar pill could get better because they actually believe they're taking medicine and this is why when it comes to the coronavirus stuff um, and you see some people who are getting kind of really sick and you know it's almost like we're not really allowed to discuss this but I would hazard a very very strong guess that a lot of these people who are getting sick and going into hospital and who who are having um, illness is because their immune systems are kind of lowered from just this com- continuous state of fear. Yeah. Because all the people that I know who, you know, have not subscribed to the kind of doomsday narrative that we're, you know, all going to die of coronavirus and you need to be really afraid of it. They're all doing fine. They've not got coronavirus. They've not had um, symptoms. They're generally pretty healthy. And it seems to me like there's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy here that when these people are on the news every single night saying, hey, look, you know, hundreds of thousands of people have died of coronavirus and this is how many cases we've got today and this, that and the other. And it seems to me that you're you're obviously going to have a situation whereby people get sick because they're so afraid of getting sick and you're lowering, you know, you're putting them into that state that makes them vulnerable in the first place. And I I wonder whether when this all kind of, whether this will come out in the wash, um, number one, but number two, when it does, how much of it we will actually be able to ascribe to that because you there is always an amount that you can ascribe to the uh, placebo effect and i wonder how much of what we're seeing is because people are living in a continuous state of fear man you're on, you're, you're you're absolutely on point from from my perspective and, and i agree and echo everything that you said i mean it's interesting that um science denies the placebo yet they use it continue con- continuously in all their in all their trials and they use it as a, as a reality constantly and from that perspective that you just mentioned then on a deeper level really aren't they literally broadcasting the sickness broadcasting the virus right if 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 fear 
ultimately is the cause for someone having symptoms, then literally it's spell broadcasting. That's what they're doing, right? They're, it's that, that, that's 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 how they're spreading it. Yeah, this reminds me also of the the kind of toilet roll effect. You know, like everyone accepted that there was no need to run out and buy toilet roll, but as soon as it got into the news or or people started telling each other, hey, there's no toilet roll left, everyone went out and bought it, like seemingly in a completely irrational manner, and yet people don't seem to believe that these kind of um, moral panic effects can happen with regards to a pandemic, um, you know, yeah. alleged or, 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 or real, whichever, wherever you stand on it. I mean, my belief is that we are, it, that there was a pandemic for a short period, um, but that we haven't been in one probably since at least late um, last spring. Not Nothing that you could actually consider to be a pandemic by, um, that that word would apply to. Um, however, you know, so, some people don't believe that there was, or some people believe that, you know, it was the seasonal flu or that it was, uh, you know, f- there's various um, kind of views on that. But um, yeah. anyway, I kind of lost my train of thought there. But I just want to move on to um, a different topic, which is um, the situation in Australia, because yeah. it seems to be getting crazier and crazier over there. Whereabouts in Australia are you, by the way? Yes, yeah, so I'm in New South Wales. I'm about an hour south of Sydney. And what's it like there? Can you can you kind of share what it's like? Because I'm hearing very mixed um, mixed things. So the current situation is that um, we exited about a six or seven month long lockdown um, earlier, about about a month ago, earlier this month, maybe last month. But technically, it is only there's only freedom available to the to the vaccinated so the unvaccinated are actually still supposed to be in lockdown um you you currently require a vaccine passport to enter any non-essential business or service um whatsoever so it's complete segregation taking place at the moment and they have a date when the unvaccinated are supposed to be released but this date keeps getting pushed forward And as they try to move the vaccine marker from 80% to 85% to 90% to 100%. But over the course of the the peak of of what we have experienced, we certainly have experienced some of the harshest lockdowns in in, in the world. There's no doubt about it. Now, I consider myself a little bit lucky where I am. I'm on the south coast of Sydney. I live near nature on, on a little beach here. But for example, in Melbourne, in Victoria, which has been primarily in the news cycle in terms of Australia, they've been in a, in a perpetual state of, of, of lockdown, um, which we briefly experienced here. So during the peak of it, we were in a lockdown 23 hours a day. We were only allowed outside for one hour. And during that one hour, you were only allowed to be exercising and you had to be wearing a mask even still. So, for example, with me, I, I left my house one day during the hour with my family and we decided to have a little picnic. And about seven cops came and, and lambasted us because we were stationary during our hour curfew, not exercising, right? I've got, I've got a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And, and seven police officers came and broke up our, just literally sitting on the grass eating a cucumber, something like this. Um, and we were, me and my wife were both fined a thousand dollars because we were stationary during this period, not because we were exercising. Um, it's been, it's, it's been, it's been very intense. There's no doubt about it. I think people have experienced it to worsening degrees, depending on their mindset. There's no doubt about that. Right. Um, for example, during this period, I was able to, to, to start my own business and dive into more authentic things and build deeper connections and find stronger friendships. But for some people, I mean, they've been, it's, it, it, it's horrific. They're, they're absolutely sitting at home, no income, um, uh, not able to even walk outside and get fresh air. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, what, what can I say, man? It's been, it, it, it has been very intense. Um, currently the Northern Territory in the Northern Territory in Australia, they're targeting the indigenous community and they're literally just going through the, the, these houses, um, into these communities and taking indigenous men, women, and children and moving them officially now into what we can call quarantine camps. Um, and is that because these communities rejected the vaccine? 
Well, they've been targeting the Indigenous communities of Australia for a very, very, very long time. Um, I think at the root of all of this, behind the what we what we currently see, this is a war on the sacred. This is a war on divinity. This is a war on life. This is a war on anything that um, that stands as testament to the fact that the lie is in fact a lie, right? So to me, them targeting the communities is them just finding another avenue to 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 promote these anti-life ideologies that I mentioned in that tweet and to target the sacred. Um, because I mean, these, 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 these are literally the oldest people on earth. These people are hundreds of thousands of years old. They've existed well before any of us. Um, and obviously that doesn't sit well for, 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 for a psychopath. Interesting. So I guess like maybe going back to what you were saying before with that, this was something we all had to collectively experience because, you know, the indigenous community there in Australia, it's, a very small community isn't it it's not there's not many people there and even across the world like tribes are on the verge of extinction i mean you know tribes which actually um, behave as tribes and don't have any kind of contact with the outside world i think there's i think that the last time i checked there was something like only about three or four actual uncontacted tribes that were supposedly existed in the world so you know maybe all of this is kind of a way of rejolting um, this kind of archaic um, way of living where, you know, we are being forced now and other people, yep. um, kind of modern people who don't have any connection to these tribes are now being forced to kind of um, not necessarily live as they did, but maybe to go through those trials and tribulations like you were talking about and to find our own kind of independence and self-sovereignty and yep. our own, um, I guess, our, our own independent path in some way. Um, you know, because we're having Absolutely, to kind of face down totalitarianism and that's going to forge your character in a, in a sense. Absolutely. Um, for those that see this for what it is and for those on an authentic path, they recognize self-reliance as, as the way forward and they are localizing, right? They are, they are detaching as much as possible from, from the government, from the state, anywhere where you mean the state still has grapples or tentacles that can control them on some level. They're coming down to the most local community level in terms of all aspects of food, tribe, whatever it might be. Whereas um, those on an inauthentic path that are simply obeying and complying whatever the state says, they're, they're, they're moving into more of a globalised ideology even more so than what it is currently now, right? Um, they're giving complete sovereignty over to the state. They're letting the state dictate every single aspect of their lives, even over their physiology and their biology. This section of the conversation has been censored in order to meet the community guidelines. For the full uncensored version of this conversation, please check the description for links to censorship-free platforms. And uh, to me, what Babylon's doing at the moment is just trying to grab as many people as it possibly can. This is a, this is a desperation attempt. But in the midst of that desperation, exposure is opposite to that. So it becomes more and more obvious the harder that they try to control, um, the more people they're waking up as a result as well. Um, and the more people that are detaching and they're rejecting the state on all levels, um, you know, and even, even beyond the current, the current globalization that they're trying to, that they're trying to pull here is we have the ultimate agenda of which probably is, and looks like transhumanism, right? You look at the metaverse now, um, you look at, um, people so completely absorbed in, in wearable technology, be it, be it watches, be it glasses, be it whatever it might be. Um, they're, they're giving you the perfect escape routes from reality, from your life, from dealing with anything natural and organic. They're saying, yeah, here's this complete AI inauthentic reality that you can play in and never really have to worry about the, um, the, the, the natural struggle that, that, that is life, which we are all organically meant to deal with in order to gain self-responsibility and gain self-sovereignty which is which is ultimately the path yeah i definitely feel that what we are seeing is the kind of last throws it almost seems as if mm -hmm. on the kind of the it, within the kind of freedom movement you've got half the people thinking 
you know, we're totally screwed. And half the people are thinking, no, actually, um, this is a really good sign. Because just like you said, we are seeing the kind of ugly um, side of something which has existed for a long time, but just hasn't been so overt. Yeah. And it seems to me like they're kind of striking out. And, you know, I wonder how much of this is down to the fact that we're able to have conversations like this and the fact that, you know, um, technology has moved us to a point where we're almost able to relate, replace the state in many ways and kind of um, get back um, to those uh, methods of um, living or I guess get back to community in some way um, yeah. and to kind of start connecting with each other again. And um, it seems to me like it's almost going exponential as well. I mean, here in the UK, um, first of all, they were like, hey, you know, you've got to get this many vaccinated and then this many and this many. And then it got to like 70 percent. And then it got I think they got it to 80 percent. And now they've said, OK, you're all going to be unvaccinated again yeah. because it's now time for the booster. So now it's almost like they just can't keep consolidating power enough. It's like this this kind of push now, this desperate push to get everyone to take the booster has now, it's almost like the state is just saying, we just don't care. Even the people who are complying, even the people who are being good little citizens and coming in and taking their jabs, we're now going to make them unvaccinated again. And uh, we're going to get them to come in for their booster, you know, more profits for the big pharma, you know, more control for government. And it seems to be that there's just no uh, breaks on this thing. And at some point, the wheels are going to come off because people are going to be looking at like, uh -huh. this has gone crazy, you know, and I'm looking at people like, uh, you know, Dan Andrews and Jacinda Ardern and stuff. I mean, these people just look and talk like psychopaths. And um, mm. it's going to become really obvious to me. It's already obvious. And I think that the, the world is going to see and, you know, even people who are, haven't necessarily woken up yet, they will soon, I think, because um, it's going to keep going. <laughs> Yeah, man. Well, everyone has their limits, right? Everyone has everyone, everyone has their limits. And to a psychopath, there is no limit. So whether it's the third booster or it's the seventh or the eighth booster, eventually, from my perspective, they're going to wake everyone up just simply by um by, by, by their own method. Um and I mean, whether on a on, on a deeper macro level, this is all part of some kind of greater plan to you mean for for, for everyone to to realize that the truth of the matter. I don't know. Um, but yeah, as, as we've mentioned many times, man, or echoed the kind of sentiment, I feel like on some level it didn't have to be this way. If, if we never had this such a cataclysmic event, people just would have continued on with their routine, with their mundane lives, just doing, doing what it is that we're doing, never second guessing, never looking twice at the nature of reality, at the nature of themselves, whether they're actually happy on a, on, 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 on a general level. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting, and to, to 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 mention something else, I think it was Marcus Cicero said that um, the nearer an empire is to collapse, the more insane the laws become. And I mean, if you simply apply that to what we're experiencing now, I think from from one level, we're we're very close to to the fall of Babylon. From my perspective, Babylon is is collapsing. And uh, yeah, there is a sector of the, of the truth, quote unquote, truth or freedom community that um, is absorbed in the entire doom and gloom narrative. You know what I mean? If there's nothing we can do, we're all going to end up in camps, whatever it might be. But to me, um, buying into that fear is, um, is, is just as bad into buying into the, into, into the narrative. In fact, I'd say fear more than anything is the primary weapon that these people are using against us. And first and foremost, yes, we're in war, but it's a psychological war. And the antidote is to reclaim your psyche, to develop psychic hygiene, to find ways to, to, to clear and to clean what's been programmed and conditioned onto us, which, um, is, which goes against what's natural and inherent to you. Yeah. And um, when you were just talking there, it reminded me that on an individual basis, very often, and I would say it normally happens this way, is when you have a kind of big breakthrough in life uh, where you kind of mm -hmm. feel like you have some kind of spiritual advancement or some kind of um, yeah transformation spiritually. It normally comes after something really, really bad. You know, it's, it's normally like a divorce. Maybe someone really close to you has died. You know, maybe it's that you've had um, an injury that's going to change, uh, you know, that's going to disable you for the rest of your life or something. And you have a kind of spiritual transformation through that. Obviously, if you're open to it and if you kind of go into it with the right 
um, intent. Yeah. And it almost seems like that's happening on a societal level that we need to have, um, you know, this huge um, moment, which is going to finally kind of push people out of these systems and, and get us to kind of turn away from the way that we've been living. Man, one 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 hundred percent. You cannot avoid the darkness. Carl Jung said, "No tree can reach heaven that doesn't have its roots in hell." Right, and this is this is simply the fact of the matter. And we people for so long have believed that they can just advance um, advance in society without ever having to to deal with their inner world and deal with the deeper things that would that would make them um, have be grounded and balanced as, as, as they grew and as they went through their process. And this is just uh, a, a universal reckoning that's taking place right now where everyone's being forced to face the darkness as, as we've said many times. And for me, in my studies of astrology and tarot, it's inherent that a natural cycle exists, right? The sun, the sun goes through the constellations as it enters Capricorn. This is, this is called the Nadi. This is the darkest period where the sun is furthest away from the earth. Right. And this is a darkness that no one can have, that, that no one can avoid. And this natural cycle that exists within the cosmos also exists within us. Um, the, the, the tarot card that represents Capricorn is the devil. Right. So this is just an inherent part of the process, the, the rite of passage, which no one can avoid, which molds man. Um, and basically we, we put it off for so long. We ignored it for so long. We thought we could get away with it. And that's why it's coming down probably much heavier than, 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 than it needed to, if things were to have followed more, more of an organic path. Um, but either way, I, I firmly believe that everything always is in balance, regardless of the extremities, there is balance between, between dark and light at all times. So what do you think that people can do going into this period then on an individual level? Because personally for me, yep. I guess I was kind of fighting it for a little while in the beginning and I was very frustrated by it, mm -hmm. but I actually feel like probably in the past 18 months, um, I've had one of the most kind of um, the biggest transformations in my own life, um, just in terms of how I've approached the world and the things that I care about. And, um, yeah, I, I guess just, I, I've, I feel like I've, how do I put this? I'm not, I, I stopped fighting, um, the way that the world was and was like, actually, um, I'm just going to accept the way the world is. And I'm just going to make the changes in my life to try to bring about the world that I want to see, which is kind of why, you know, one of the reasons I'm having this conversation now is because, um, you know, that's one of the things that's important to me is having conversation with like-minded people and trying to build communities and things, which I think is important. But from your own point of view, yeah. what do you think that individuals can be doing going through this period? Because I know a lot of people are still stuck in that phase of feeling very, um, you know, that like, the world is happening to them and that they don't have a choice and they're being forced into these situations. And a lot of people are scared and they don't want to take the vaccine and they're being forced, you know, they're being, um, they're losing their jobs, et cetera. So yeah. what would you kind of, um, how, how would you speak to those people? Yeah. Um, my message really is very simple. And that this is a time for you to reclaim your individuality for so long. We've been programmed, um, under the ideology of collectivism, which basically is at the root of communism and of socialism, where we've been programmed to believe that we are our brother's keeper and that we're responsible for everyone else, right? And this is where terms like the greats are good, which they've been throwing at us for so long, comes into play as well. This is, this is the psychological roots of this kind of propaganda. And the opportunity that's available to people now is to really discover who they are as individuals and reclaim themselves as individuals. They have the opportunity now to during this process, ride the wave of working through their fears, riding the wave of working through why they're so resistant to, 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 to building themselves up, to developing self-love, to making actions in the world, which are uniquely in alignment with who they are, with who they were born to be. So take a look and ask the question, who am I? What am I here to do? What do I actually like doing? What do I want to do from this point going forward? If I had, you mean the, if, if the slate was clean and I had choices, what would I create? We are inherently creative beings, right? We are a continually, a continual unfolding process. And there's a great opportunity right now. The ground is very fertile 
for you to begin to build a life that is more authentic than you could have ever imagined if this didn't take place. And it's not going to happen overnight, but once you become clear about who you are and what it is that you want to do, then take small actions towards authenticity, towards showing up exactly who you are, despite what the crowd might say, the crowd showing up as your community or as your friends or as your family or whatever it might be. This is the opportunity you have now to reclaim you and to detach what everyone else um, has over you, which is actually just holding you back, right? You think of the, 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 the crabs in the bottom of the bucket ideology as you begin to climb up, right? The, the, the other crabs that don't like it, they try to pull you down. Um, but now you have the chance to escape the bucket and build a life of self-reliance and of sovereignty that isn't dependent on anyone else, anyone else's ideas, um, dictating, who you are, what you do, or how you behave. So get really clear about your morals, about your values, about, about your passions, and begin to take small steps each day in unlocking your true potential and in living a life of deep fulfillment through the opportunity that has presented itself. Great. That's uh, a really nice note to finish on. So um, do you want to just let people know where they can find you and any last words that you have? Yeah, sure, man. Um, firstly, I appreciate you having me on and I, I appreciate having the chat. And for me too, I echo, I echo the sentiment that the last two years have been the some of the greatest of my life. Um, I've created friendships and networks based on real morals and real values. And I've made connections that I never thought I would have through this process, you know? Um, so nice to meet you, dude. And thanks for having me on. People can find me at joelrafidi.com. Um, the services that I offer are helping people better know themselves as individuals using different divination modalities. And I help and guide people through the process of shadow work as well. Um, the deeper we go within, the further we can extend out is, is my ultimate philosophy. I have a podcast called Here for the Truth um, podcast as well. People can go check that out if, if, if they'd like to. Co hosted with my friend Erasmus in LA. Um, we got some pretty good guests. And yeah, man, that's, that's pretty much it for me. Great. Thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate it.